Guys, I don't want to be dramatic, but like, if my flat was burning down in a fire, my advanced reader's copy of Sally Rooney's new book is the first thing I would save. So hello everyone, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome to Jack in the Books. As you all know, if you've been following this channel for a while, there are two women who have me in a chokehold, and those two women are Lord and Sally Rooney. So let's just say, it's a good time for me at the moment. We have a new Lord album and Sally Rooney's new book, Beautiful World, Where Are You, comes out on the 7th of September. However, I have very, very kindly been sent an advanced copy of this book to read and I might shit myself, I'm so excited. I loved Normal People, I loved its discussions about relationships and sex and class and imposter syndrome and university. I loved conversations with friends and its microscopic look at communication and miscommunication, especially amongst people kind of in their early 20s. This is the woman who gave us lines like, I'm not a religious person, but I do sometimes think God made you for me. I love her. If Sally Rooney published her shopping list or her like daily to-do list, I would read it. I would be first in line. I would have it pre-ordered. I have so many Sally Rooney quotes just written in notes on my laptop. I'm gonna read you another one. Um, Gradually, the waiting began to feel less like waiting and more like this was simply what life was. The distracting tasks undertaken while the thing you are waiting for continues not to happen. I love her, and so I am partly buzzing to read this new book and partly terrified that I won't like it. And you know me, I'm gonna give you an honest review. So, this is the blurb. Alice, a novelist, meets Felix, who works in a warehouse, and asks him if he'd like to travel to Rome with her. Meanwhile, in Dublin, her best friend Eileen is getting over a breakup and slips back into flirting with Simon, a man she has known since childhood. Alice, Felix, Eileen, and Simon are still young, but life is catching up with them. They desire each other, they delude each other, they get together, they break apart. They worry about sex and friendship and the world they live in. Are they standing in the last lighted room before the darkness, bearing witness to something? Will they find a way to believe in a beautiful world? That tells me nothing, <laughs> and I can't wait. So, because obviously this is a hugely anticipated release this year, I thought I would share my thoughts on this book as I read it, uh, with you guys. Of course, this will be completely spoiler free. I'm just going to talk generally about the writing style, um, how the plot sort of develops, and what I think of the book overall. And I can't wait to take you for the ride. You know who else is going to be coming for the ride? Basmo, who have very kindly sponsored today's video. You know how much I love an app designed for reading lovers. And Basmo is exactly that. It's everything a reader needs to stay focused while they read, and it's the perfect reading companion. So, what are your goals with Basmo? I am going to say that I want to save notes from books. I think that's my main sort of priority here. How many books have you read in the last 12 months? Uh, when do you like to read the most? Okay, I think the evening is kind of my time to shine. Oh, and I'm going to allow notes notifications because this will send you daily reminders to get reading, which, you know, sometimes it just slips your mind, and so I think that's very useful. What book are you currently reading? I am reading Beautiful World, Where Are You? Okay, so we can start the session, and then as I'm reading along, it's tracking my reading time, and I can make notes on the book as I go. Scan great ideas, so take a photo of your favorite sentences or paragraphs to save them as notes. Oh my god, I love it. And journal your emotions. This is so cool because you get to basically see how your emotions changed as you went through a book, and you can document the, like, really sad moments and the bits that you found joy from. I'm ready, sign me up. So as you can see, I'm now in a reading session, so it's timing me and I can make little notes as I go. I can scan pages if I wanna take a picture of a certain quote, which I love to do. Um, I love this, I'm obsessed already, Basmo. You have excelled yourselves, I cannot wait to read mindfully by using this app, and then schedule my next read and see my reading stats. Very, very cool, and if you guys wanna sign up and you like the sound of it, the link will be down below. And there is also a free trial, so check that out. And now I have a hot date with my most anticipated book of the year, and I'm very excited about it. Let's go. Also, can we just take a second to appreciate this cover? I mean, it does what it says on the tin because it is beautiful. There's been a fair few articles about how book cover designs are becoming increasingly important in terms of like booktube, booktop, bookstagram. And it's actually kind of known as a bit of a Sally Rooney effect because her books became so like Instagrammable, especially normal people. But they've done it again. I think the actual cover is going to be blue, but this um, advanced reader's copy is this lovely pink color and I'm a big fan. So yeah, I feel very, very lucky to own this. By the way, guys, this is I'm in my happy place. Right now, life is, life is sweet. Okay, updates, I'm about 50 pages in. And one thing I just completely forgot about Sally Rooney's writing is that she doesn't use quotation marks. And I think prior to reading Sally Rooney novels, I would have been like, 
Quotation marks are a pretty non-negotiable, like, part of writing. You need quotation marks. But Miss Rooney said, Absolutely not. Sally Rooney crafts such believable, authentic characters and voices that are also independent of one another that it's always clear who is talking. Like, I'm 50 pages in, I'm new to these characters, and I still feel like I always know who's addressing who, who's in the conversation, who's talking at what time, and that is masterful. The fact that she can do that is mad. Also, very interesting that one of the characters is a novelist because you can kind of see Sally Rooney maturing as a human being who is writing books. Like, we're not in Trinity College Dublin anymore. We're like into adult jobs and um, there's comments on kind of the publishing industry and um, being a successful author, which obviously is Sally Rooney's new reality. Um, and it's really interesting to read about. Yeah, already I'm only 50 pages in, but it feels a lot more mature than the previous two books that I've read of hers. Um, and I'm liking it so far. I'm not gripped yet. But I'm liking it. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm 100 pages in, and I'm gripped. As you will know if you've read Sally Rooney's previous work, she is really into Marxism and explores that within her writing, and I feel like this book is the most natural integration of Marxist and socialist ideas and thinking and discussions about things like communism. Um, I think they're really natural in this book. We basically have an exchange between two of the characters and they're having this correspondence over email. And in those emails, they have these really profound and intellectual discussions. And then in their kind of day-to-day -day lives, they're just going about normal things. There's a really interesting discussion about the use of the term working class and who qualifies as being working class. It talks about how some people are on wages and hours that they would consider to make themselves working class, but are not from traditionally working class backgrounds and like the privilege of their background may impact how they see the world and how they perceive themselves. And yeah, I just thought it was a really interesting discussion. Sally Rooney words it a lot better than I just have. The level of detail, the precision of the detail in this book is exquisite to read. Like to give you an example, one of the characters pulls out their phone um, just to like check a text. Um, and it mentions how his phone is old and a bit glitchy. And so when he opens the messaging app, it always makes his music pause in his headphones. And I just think the level of detail there is so impressive and it feels like everything has been so well thought out. It feels so real. You forget that there's a piece of paper with words on it that is separating you from these characters. You just feel like you're actually a voyeur just observing them. There's also a few sections here which I loved where Sally Rooney basically addresses uh, her critics in a kind of subtle way. Like I mentioned before, because one of the characters is a novelist, there's some really interesting discussions and criticism about how um, her work is perceived, and obviously you can tell that that's a commentary on how Sally Rooney's own work is perceived. And she talks about how um, some contemporary literature is about sex and relationships and friendships, and how sometimes critics look down on that because they see it as like unimportant and very privileged to be able to, you know, write a novel that is only concerned with your communication and relationships with your peers. But I think what she's addressing and what maybe the point of this book is, is to say that actually we want to read about love and relationships and sex because that's something that exists in all of our lives and it's something that we all encounter and navigate and work out for ourselves and so actually there's a lot of value in writing about things that everyone relates to. And yeah, we're having these lofty elevated conversations about Marxism and class and all of these kinds of things, but really <laughs> the one thing that is prevalent in everyone's lives every single day is the people that we love and the relationships that we have and the people we communicate with. So. Um, I'm enjoying it. I think it's it's a good piece of work. And yeah, I'm definitely hooked now. And I'm very intrigued to see where it's gonna go. I predict I might binge the rest of it, <laughs> maybe. I will let you know. See you in a bit. And when I wanna save a quote, it's super easy with the Basmo app. You just uh, take a picture of the page and it transcribes it for you. Very, very useful. Okay, hi, hey, hello. Um, <laughs> it's much later now. I went out for dinner with some friends in Chelsea, but I just got back and I read up to page 200 and I just love this book, man. What I love about Sally Rooney's characters is that they are flawed. They make mistakes. They are imperfect human beings like we all are. They say the wrong thing. Sometimes they say nothing at all and it's so frustrating because you're like, just do something about this situation. But I think that's the point because when we view things from this like third person objective perspective, um, we can see how people are miscommunicating and not understanding each other. But when you're in the moment, you don't notice those things. And I think that's what's so 
real and raw and candid about her works, and this is no exception. It's mostly written in the third person, but because we have this email correspondence, we also get a few first person perspectives as well. Um, and I'm really enjoying that and the sort of like free and direct discourse that we get. Um, so yeah, um, I'm gonna head to bed now. Uh, because my eyes are closing, <laughs> but that's just because I'm shattered and not because of the book because if I could stay up all night reading this, I absolutely would. So I'm gonna end my Basmo reading session and I'm gonna head to bed. Oh my god, I've unintentionally matched my jumper to the book I'm making a vlog about. Nice. Okay, it's the next day. I absolutely binge read this book as soon as I woke up this morning and I just finished it and I have goosebumps. Literally look how many pages I folded down. Yes, I do dog ear the pages. I'm sorry about it. Obviously no spoilers, but it was great. Um, oh, <laughs> got a little bit of a leaf situation going on here. I mean, are we on Jack in the Books or the David Attenborough YouTube channel? I like to keep you on your toes. Anyways, first thing I wanted to say is if any of you pick up this book, there's a dinner party scene in like the final quarter maybe, which I think is one of the best pieces of prose I've ever read. And it's so funny because nothing really happens in that scene. It's just like four friends having dinner. And at the same time, it's so descriptive and you really feel every sense that the characters are feeling. And I thought it was chef kiss masterful. This book is one of the easiest five stars I've ever given. I loved it. So perceptive, so authentic, so believable. And I guess this is like a very, very, the most mild of spoilers of all time. So skip forward like 20 seconds if you don't want to hear this. But it ends during the pandemic, which I did not expect at all. At the end, we jump forwards in time and it's lockdown. And I did not expect that, but it feels like the perfect book that we need right now. And I think I sort of touched on this topic yesterday, but one of the main discussion points that this book grapples with is this idea that good fiction, good conversation, good discussions should be about very profound, important, big, heavy topics. But actually, whoa, when actually what we've realized in this last year of lockdowns and isolations is that our personal relationships and our communication with people and the love that we feel for friends and for um, people we're in relationships with, those things are something that we always come back to and are so integral to the daily running of our lives. And they're not little things, just because they're ordinary doesn't mean they aren't beautiful. And I think that this idea of like, beautiful world, where are you, is about thinking about things like climate anxiety and the world that we currently live in and all of the issues in this world and looking for the beauty within our personal relationships. Because there's so much ugliness out there, but sometimes the most beautiful things are the simple ones. And I loved the message of this book. I mean, that's what I took away from it anyway. I think this is an incredibly special book. I cannot wait for this treasure to be out in the world on September the 7th, I believe. A huge shout out to Faber for sending me this advanced copy. Obviously, all opinions are 100% my own. Um, they didn't ask me to share this video or talk about this book at all, um, but I personally just really enjoyed it and <laughs> it's so up my street. Um, this is a strong recommendation for me and I even have matched it. I am actually morphing into this book. At Basmo, at the end of your reading sessions, you like give it a rating or a reaction um, and I'm, I'm clicking awesome because I enjoyed this a lot. All the best, stay in touch. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Massive shout out to Basmo for sponsoring it. Thank you very much. Link to download is down below um, so you can read more mindfully and take note of all of the things that you're reading and start thinking in depth and critically about the literature that you consume. Have a great day, subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.